relegation, title stripped, points deduction, and fine, are some of the sanctions Manchester City could face if found guilty. The English most successful football club of the last decade could face a wide range of sanctions, including expulsion from the Premier League. It could be stripped of its league titles, prevented from signing or registering new players, and even fined an unlimited amount. What crime has Manchester City committed? That will warrant all of this punishment, which will undoubtedly ultimately leads to their demise. The league champions have been accused of cheating the system on an industrial scale. Premier League accused them of more than 100 separate breaches of financial rules over a nine-year period between 2009 and 2018, and spending the last four years attempting to obstruct and impede the league's investigation process. This covers club revenue, which includes sponsorship income and operating costs. Further alleged breaches relate to rules requiring full details of manager remuneration from the 2009-10 to 2012-13 seasons, when Roberto Mancini was in charge, and player remuneration between 2010-11 and 2015-16. Could Erling Holland be lining up for a league match against Rochdale or Tranmere Rovers soon? Are Steven Gerrard and Brendan Rodgers going to win the Premier League title that has evaded them for so long? Must Sergio Aguero's moment to end all moments now be perceived differently? These are all currently options that have been put out. It all sounds very dramatic, granted, but then the accusation from the Premier League is that City, who have won six of the last 11 titles, and established themselves as the world's richest club, in terms of revenue generated, have been cheating the system for years. Also winning 17 trophies since 2008. These are not minor oversights, or administrative errors, the Premier League claim, rather, it is rule-breaking on an industrial scale. So, if all or even some of the allegations, are confirmed, the penalty must be proportionate to the crime. And, if it implies relegation and or point deductions, or destroying the wonderful memories left by Aguero, David Silva, Yaya Toure, and others, then how could anyone really argue? Finding one of the world's richest sporting institutions a few quid. Manchester City, would ask that if consequences are extreme, why did QPR and Bournemouth only get fines when they committed similar breaches? They could legally argue, they are being victimized, and make their case. City, for their part, will strongly contest the charges, and claimed in a statement on Monday that a comprehensive body of irrefutable evidence exists in support of the club's position. They have already won a similar case against UEFA, who in 2020 attempted to ban them from European competition, for two seasons and fined them 30 million euros, for breaking financial fair play rules, and nobody within football expects this issue to be resolved swiftly, with months, even years, of legal wrangling anticipated. What is clear, though, is that this has the potential to be one of the most significant moments in English football history, a case that could drastically alter the landscape of the game, both in the country and across Europe. The Manchester clubs rise to prominence, since they were taken over by the Abu Dhabi United Group, led by Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan, in 2008 has been remarkable, comparable only to that of Chelsea under Roman Abramovich a few years earlier. Newcastle, which was taken over by Saudi Arabia's public investment fund in 2021, may soon find itself in that category too. Its success has been achieved, by spending huge sums of money, on the best players and the best managers, the best facilities, and the best executives. They have spent it well, unquestionably, building some of the finest teams, and playing some of the finest football imaginable. But there is little that is organic about the growth, of a club that finished no higher than 8th, in the Premier League's first 16 years, and which was playing in the third tier as recently as 1999. They got to the top with money, lots of it, and the Premier League believes, they did so fraudulently. And so, the battle lines are drawn once more, and the lawyers have been called for again. The story will run and run, for sure. Naturally, there will be a lot of guesstimating in their way, as rivals try to gain momentum on a club, that has threatened to throw them all behind. The likes of Liverpool and Manchester United, could gain a league title or two, how much that would actually mean to them, is another debate entirely, Arsenal might gain an edge in this season's title race, Holland, Kevin De Brenna and Pep Guardiola may start to question their futures. City supporters, of course, will pray for an acquittal, and will seek to defend their club at all costs. The online debate, no doubt, will be rendered almost meaningless by tribal allegiances. One thing is for sure, though. This is a story that has the potential to change football's past, present, and future. The reputation of Manchester City, and all associated with the club, is on the line, and so is that of the Premier League, and of the sport in general. City, 
of course, believes they will win. On the pitch and off it, City has done little else but win since Abu Dhabi rocked up. But if they are found guilty, then they must face severe consequences. For starters, their 21-year stay in the Premier League should be well and truly over. Of course, there is a long way to go before the dust settles, the case will no doubt go through multiple layers of lawyers, courts, and negotiations. We are now beginning a very long end game. Manchester City's reputation, and the reputation of those who own it is on the line. The outcome, whenever it comes, will be fascinating. And also interesting, as we sit back to view the end game. Thank you, for watching. Subscribe to the channel for weekly, documentary exclusives on the best sport, in the world. Until the next one, stay tuned.